uh, Ted Carroll, 945 Forest Avenue. Thank you. Um, I'm going to uh, circulate a document that I know the City Council has all seen before. Uh, and while it circulates and makes its way around the podium, I'll read a short story to you. Um, I'm a lifelong Rye resident who worked tirelessly for this City Council majority's election in 2009. We'll let Peter go. And this council's continuing strategic silence since then in that so-called change election victory on a very big local issue disgusts me. But here's the story. Decades ago, my once boss and eventual partner, now retired, former CBS Inc. President John D. Bakke, sharply scolded me for casually mentioning that TV network viewing, family viewing hour regulations had become passe in the new 500 channel universe. He said it was the duty of all broadcasters to think first and foremost of the possibility that impressionable young children could be exposed to inappropriate material without their parents' knowledge or guidance, and that their faith in the integrity of the CBS network and the affiliates would be irreparably harmed if this did in fact take place. This served as kind of a brushback pass at me about the duties and responsibilities of those in positions of power, and was meant as a lesson about protecting the vulnerable and by so doing, protecting your own interests and vulnerabilities. I've always kept it in mind from that day forward as a board member and executive of dozens of US media and information companies we've owned. Imagine therefore, if you will, that unlike some members of this stunningly incurious Rye City Council, someone trained as I has now reviewed hundreds of pages of transcripts of testimony under oath stolen Rye City documents, secret <laughs> photographs, engineering reports, engineering drawings, and scientific analyses and studies gathered under compulsion by a judge in good standing that, to anyone other than a liar, show a stark apparent pattern of malfeasance and corruption, including testimony to personal corruption under oath reaching from employees and lawyers up to and including now members of the executive office of county government. The evidence currently sits in cardboard boxes in a home on Milton Point, owned, wholly owned by a vulnerable senior citizen, now deceased, who did absolutely nothing to bring this entire matter upon himself. This is exactly the kind of person that any legitimate government is charged with protecting from acts of this nature committed by anyone, including and especially the government itself. A former Rye City mayor and retired judge knows all about this and has publicly called for a local public investigation as outlined in the Rye City Charter. A sitting council member who's an attorney in good standing in the state of New York has publicly done the same, and hundreds of regular Rye City residents have signed petitions supporting such an investigation and an accounting of the matter, and they've been delivered repeatedly to members of this City Council. Outcry over this matter helped tip the election of 2009 to the current Council majority, all of whom promised to support a public investigation to identify the wrongdoers or mediate the damages and thus put the matter behind the city so that we, they could govern in a credible, trustworthy, institutional manner going forward. <coughs> they, did, did, they then did nothing but <coughs> quietly over time become advised to join the Stonewallers. So a key question before our reformers kick into overdrive therefore, is who has the courage and wisdom to remove the wraps here once and for all? Who's a promise keeper and sees it in the interest of all Rye City taxpayers and property owners 
to clean out the barn and start governing here in the mold of those who came before, keeping Rye highest on the map of well-run municipalities and thus attractive to the people who live or one day might live here. Okay, that's the story part. Just another, another minute. Yeah. Oh, I don't, I don't need much more time because I can't do much more. This is a stolen City of Rye document. It's owned now by Rita Schubert. I can't give it to you. But I'd like to come back at your next meeting and ask you if you'd like to see it. If you do, we can get going and clean out the barn. But until that time, it's the property of Mrs. Schubert. And I can tell you, ladies and gentlemen, that this will be sunlighted before I leave this earth. Thank you. Thank you. Um, I, I unfortunately made a mistake. I didn't have my reading glasses. We had the, the flood resolution. Yeah. And, and Ted, whatever you have, I mean, I'd like to see it. I mean, I'm curious. Is anyone else? By 7 0 vote. Okay, and now we're back to the residence section. So I have this. Sign ins. Anybody else want to sign in? Please sign in with the clerk. Yes. Mr. Mayor, you have to say something in my statement? Yes. Uh, I'm sorry, I left the podium without telling you why I gave you that prior document. <coughs> and I want to advise you that that document is a false public document. It is a violation of many laws because it is totally inaccurate and it should be noted as such. Otherwise, I would be guilty of giving you something false. That document will be proven to be a total fallacious document if you go forward. That's why I gave it to you. I'm sorry. Okay, thank you.